Hey, so this tutorial is just on how to use Tarkov uh, models and like textures for such for like Blender rendering or like 3D printing. So first things you want to head to this link in the description and then just hit um, Asset Studio on the right side and then just this first zip file here, just download this one. And then the second thing you'll want to get is batch import wavefront object files. This will let you import multiple object files at once, just makes life a lot easier. And then this one you want to head to releases and you just want to make sure you have the right version for your blender. My blender is still 3.3 so I'm going to download that one. And it just downloads as a python file. So your asset studio will come as a zip file which you can just copy to a new folder. Studio. And then just paste them there. And then your batch import will come as a Python file. So to install that one, you want to head to Blender. And just up the top at Edit, you want to go to Preferences, and then Install. And then you just want the batch import object Python file and install add-on. And then once you've done that, you want to hit the little check mark, and that's installed. Now, if you are 3D printing or aim to 3D print, there's two things I recommend you get. The first one is Build Tool. So this will just let you really easily cut objects up for 3D printing. And then the second one I recommend is 3D Print Toolbox. And this will let you really easily export into your STLs and all that kind of thing. To actually extract the models themselves, you just want to head to Asset Studio and open up the .exe file. And then once you're in here, you just want to head over to File, Load Folder, and you want to go to where your Tarkov is installed. And then once you're in your Tarkov file, you want to head to Escape from Tarkov Data, Streaming Assets, Windows, Assets, Content. So this is everything, all your models in game. Audio is all your audio. Characters are your player models, scavs, and bosses. Common prefabs, there's no models in there at all. Hands, you don't need to worry about. Items, that is all your MO, Barter, weapon mods, all that kind of stuff, pretty much everything. Location objects, only thing in there is airdrops and like the plane itself, nothing in locations. Materials, the only thing in there is the texture for the food items. Pocket map, that is literally the in-game pocket map textures. Um, prefabs, there's only like one suitcase in there. Textures, textures for some things. And weapons is all the bases for all your weapons you've got in the game. So to actually extract time from the game, you just want to go to where it's located. So I'm just going to go into items here. Let's say under mod. Let's go to a scope. Select that folder. Just let that one load. Shouldn't take too long. So once that's loaded, you'll get this big file here. If you don't see this, you'll probably be on this screen. Just head to asset list. You can filter by mesh. So that'll give you all your meshes. Everything's a little like split up. But let's say we are after the voodoo. So I search Fudu. So we'll get so we'll get two main ones here, LOD zero and LOD one. LOD one is the lower detail, so you want to try and get LOD zero if you can. And so the switch is what you're after here. So it's practically the same. So you just want to select these ones here, and then export selected assets. To a folder where you can where it's at. So you got the mesh there, and if you're after the texture for that one, you just set up texture 2D, filter by type. So the ones we want for this are your gloss, normal map, and your diffusion map. And export selected assets, select folder. That'll come as a texture file. So to import that, import. You can go through Wavefront, but they're going to be able to import one at a time. That's why I recommend using the Wavefront batch import. Just head to where you extracted to. And then you can select multiple at once with this and just hit import multiple. So just hit A for all, S for scale, and it'll do about 100. So you'll see that sometimes they don't line up quite right. So to move that, just G and then Z. And then you can lock onto an axis here. And then we can snap to a vertex here. And then G, Z, snap to there, and you'll see that we've got a voodoo. 
So to add text to that, uh, what we can do here first is Control J to join as one object, and then once you've selected the object, just head over to Materials, New Material, Base Color, Image Texture, and then Open. So to go to where you extracted the textures to. You can open it all at once here. So you see we've got the voodoo here. All the textures on and everything. It's pretty straightforward to put your textures on your guns and whatnot. Fair warning, if you are building guns, it does take a little bit of time because every single piece of the gun is split up into its own little file. So you have to piece them together. It can be a bit annoying. So what I do recommend doing is using Tarkov itself just as a guide to having an understanding of where things go together. This makes your life a lot easier and you can also use it to build a gun and then get the part list and then you can eventually add them together. Just makes your life a lot easier. So once you're in Tarkov, um, just under presets and you can open up whatever you want to open up. Let's just say machine guns, RPK, open that one up. So you'll see it's got everything here. So you just want to strip this down. So that's how the RPK will come from the weapons folder. It'll look like this. So what you can do is you can go through and see what you need. So I need the RPK 16, whatever hand grip you want. Say you want that one, magazine you want, and you know, pistol grip you want, whatever. And then what you can do is you can go find parts, um, and it'll give you a list of all the things you need, pretty much. So you can go through, figure out what you need to extract. So I do recommend using your preset builder, just as a little guide to help you out. Say you did want to extract the RPK, you want to head to File, Load Folder, back in Content, under Weapons, and then just down to RPK. RPK 16, just select that folder. There's a lot of stuff in here for like animations and all that, but we just want meshes and textures if you're after the animation side. So all of the LOD zeros you want to select, and then also all of the LOD zero textures as well. And then same thing again, export selected assets, just select that folder. So once they're done, back in Blender, File, Import Wavefront Batch, And then you just want to hit import multiple and then hit all scale and we'll just do 100. So you will see that some things won't line up precisely, but it's a simple enough fix. G and Z, bring it up a bit. For the most part, it'll be pretty accurate, but some things you have to play around with, but yeah. Um, and same thing again to add texture, new, base color, image texture, open, same place you exported to, texture 2D, and these, these ones here, open image, and it will align itself up pretty well. You can play around with your specular and all that kind of stuff. So this part, I'm going to show you how to pair these models for like 3D printing. So say your printer's too small or you just can't print it all at once with like the amount of filament you've got. What you want to do here if just shift right click there, set up a new 3D cursor and then shift A and then just add a plane and then you want to head over to lock your access so it's easier and then just rotate 90 sorry and you just want to scale that one up so it pretty much surrounds the entire thing with nothing going outside the plane. And then you want to head over to Modifiers, Add Modifier, Solidify, Thickness. So if you hold, hold Shift here, and you can just drag, click and drag to the left. And you want to get down to smallest as possible, which is the 0 0.001. And then what you want to do, select the plane, then select the mesh. And because we've installed Build Tool, you can press Control, Shift, and B, and then just hit Difference here, 
So at first it'll look like it's done nothing, but you'll see it's got a line there. So to separate the model, those two pieces, you just want to hit tab to go into edit mode, all, and then press P, and then by loose parts. So out of edit mode, tab again. Some things will separate here, which is good because you don't have to do these. So you can control J to join them. And you'll see that it's cut these ones up already for us, which is pretty good. So when you do separate by loose parts, um, if you get objects that are missing like faces where they should be, a uh, simple fix for this one example, I can head over to the x-axis, hold Z, go to wireframe, then in edit mode, I can select these bottom vertices, and then I'll show you. I can simply press F to fill, and that'll be a solid face. And I can do the same thing, just selected all these vertices here, F to fill, and you get a solid face there. And another important thing I've found, is, like to scale these objects correctly, the appropriate scale I found for 3D printing real size is a blender meter is equal to a real life millimeter. So this here would be about 2.7 centimeters long. So obviously you want a lot bigger than that. So if I scale it up about 10%, you'll see that it now goes to 270 meters, which would be about 27 centimeters long. And that's probably at a more appropriate size. So to add a little connector so they align up properly, uh, what we can do here, just 3D cursor, Shift A, and we'll add, say, a cube. We'll just hide this one, H to hide. Um, you can join those together, so H to hide. Obviously, some things don't get cut up, but that's just how Blender works. So if we bring this one along, sorry, you'll see that it's given us two faces here, which is precisely what we want. Play it for a little bit. Scale it down a tad. Scale Y. Just so it's got a little connector so it knows where to go. And then what you want to do is you unhide these things. And then Alt H to unhide. And then what you want to do on this cube here is Shift D to duplicate and then just hit Escape so it doesn't go anywhere but to where it originally was. And then same thing again as the build tool, select the cube, select the first cut, control, shift, B, hit difference. So you obviously won't see it to begin with here, but duplicate it again. Hit the other object that you want to add the other hole to, control, shift, B, difference. And you'll see here, move this one out of the way, it's put two holes into the objects. So what you can do, we'll just hide these ones is you can go edit number three for face and you can just scale that one down a little bit scale that one down as well just scale that down a little bit just so when you're 3d printing you don't have any issues with the connector not being able to fit in because obviously when you 3d print you get parts expanding or parts shrinking that's just how it goes so yeah you'll see there pretty straightforward to cut pieces up to print them. Um, so what you can do now to export it, select the item or cut you want to export, this one here, and then head over to 3D print, which you'll, you'll see here on this side tab because you've installed the 3D print toolbox. And first things first, you want to hit clean up and make manifold. So you'll see that it's cleared two faces up, but now it's cleaned up zero. So that means it's good to print. You want to do that so just when you add it to your slicer there isn't any irregularities that cause like compiling errors and if you notice any issues when making this manifold just check that aren't any stray vertices anywhere uh, like vertices that aren't connected faces that aren't connected because that will mix it up so you just want to make sure you make that manifold and the next thing you want to do head to export select your folder you want to export to I'm just going to do the same one except uh, format whatever you want STL object, all those, and then just hit export, and it'll say export down here, and you will see this is just using my, this is just my slicer here, that it has imported it. Scale it up a little bit. 
to extract it all together and whatnot. And you'll see here that it's got the cut underneath and it's got pretty much the part itself. So it's pretty straightforward to do your 3D printing. If you are wanting to import cat player models from those sort of things, you want to select the character folder. Um, I recommend just selecting the entire character folder because you want to get the skeleton mesh so you can position it or just so it lines up properly. Otherwise, it's a really big pain to do. So first things here, you want to search up skeleton. And then this one here, you want to hit right click, go to scene hierarchy, and then just select the box on it. And then whatever character you're after. And then back in here, you can filter by mesh, and then whoever you're after, let's just say we're after Glucar. And you'll see here it's got his head, his pants, and his top. So just select the ones you want. So first of all, you want this one, go to scene hierarchy, and then just hit LED zero. And then go back to asset list, go to your pants, select scene hierarchy, LOD zero, same for your top, make sure you select the right level of detail. Now you've selected them all in your scene hierarchy, you want to hit model, export selected objects merge plus selected animation clips. And then you just want to name this, you know what it is. And that will export as a FBX, which Blender can import very easily. Just head to FBX here. Go to where you extracted to, and then select that one. But before you import it, you'll just want to hit Ignore Leaf Bones, and then Automatic Bone Orientation, and import that one. And scale it up by about a thousand, just to make your life easy. So you'll see a lot of random stuff here. So to get rid of those, at the top right here, just hit on extras, and that'll get rid of all the placeholder spots. Now, he does look quite see-through currently, which is not what you want. So head to material here, and then down to show back face, uncheck that one. I like to do that for all of them. So that'll get rid of star. Now it's still quite, um, Dull, I think I guess. So what you can do is select opaque here. Opaque. And then you can just drop down the specular. This is the best fix I've found to importing. Um, as to why it's quite Geometric. I'm not too sure about that. Sorry. So in your uh, pose mode here, there's heaps of tutorials online. I won't really go into this too much, but it's pretty simple. So you'll want to head to pose mode. If you move a bone around in pose mode, it will transform the mesh in object mode, which you can then export that mesh however you pose it. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, sorry if I didn't cover everything, but that's pretty much all I know. I just wanted to share that little starter bit of knowledge. I'm sure you can probably find more online, but that's all I could find for myself. and That's all I needed. So I'm just sharing it with you guys. Cheers.